Ranger Sorella here at Red Top Mountain State Park. Today we're talking about animal ambassadors. Now animal ambassadors are not pets. They are wild animals who have been impacted by humans. That means they've been affected by humans in such a way that it is not nice to re-release them into the wild. Our animal ambassadors now have safe enclosures and special care from our rangers. They also help our rangers to educate guests. This is Mr. T, the Eastern Box Turtle. Mr. T has beautiful red eyes. And if we look at the plastron, that's the special name for this tummy shell, you can see it scoops in a little bit right here. That scoop in and those red eyes of the Eastern Box Turtle are good indicators that this Eastern Box Turtle is male. However, in 2018, Mr. T laid some eggs. That is the best indicator that she's actually a girl. Uh, box turtles will lay eggs when they reach maturity. They'll lay them every two to five years once they are adults. So we know Mr. T has to be at least 10 years old, that's adulthood, and then probably closer to 12 to 15. So I also wanna show you on the plastron, there's this hinge right here which is why Eastern box turtles get their name. It allows them to close up like a box. That little hinge, when they pull in their legs and their head, they've used that hinge and some muscles to pull it up and close it, just like a mailbox. I wanted to put Mr. T in the grass today so you can watch her walk just a little. As you can see, she's actually pretty fast especially when she wants to be. She has to be able to get away from predators. She wants to be in the shade, near a rock or under a tree where she can stay hidden. They also love to eat worms. So we're gonna show off another feature, which is these long claws on their feet. Very good posing, Mr. T. You can see these claws are excellent for grabbing into dirt and digging. Sometimes when we hold our turtles, people like to say they look like they're swimming or flying. But eastern box turtles are not swimming turtles. They're land turtles. They're just not used to being up in the air, and they want to get those feet back down on the ground where they can dig and walk. Did you know eastern box turtles have a map in their head of the route that they travel every year? When people move a box turtle off of its path or map, it gets lost and often dies trying to find its way back. When you have a map, it's not like GPS. Your map can't tell you, if you're off of it, how to get back. Your map can only show you the parts that are on the map. So, if you have an eastern box turtle and you've moved it off of its map, it won't know how to get back on its route. So if you see a turtle on the road and it is safe for you to help it cross, always move the turtle in the direction that it is facing. Even if that doesn't seem like the best area for a turtle, I promise it'll be best for the turtle. This is Scooter. She's an Eastern Box Turtle. You may remember that Mr. T is also an Eastern Box Turtle, but these two turtles look a little different. If you see Scooter's eyes, they're not bright red. They're more of an amber color. And Scooter is also missing a front leg. This leg doesn't have any claws on it, although this one does. So Scooter was raised aquatically for a while. That means that someone found her and picked her up and decided to raise her in like a fish tank with water, like you would a water turtle, like our sliders that you see in the pet stores. But Eastern box turtles are land turtles. So she did not grow well. This shell right here is not a nice smooth dome like Mr. T's is. It has some strange divots and it's got some uh, flatness to it instead of being a nice high dome. So all of this is because a turtle's shell is made of bone. Just like your spine, my spine's back here, and if something happens to my spine, it stays happened. And in Mr. T's case, she had the wrong kind of, I'm sorry, this is not Mr. T, this is Scooter. In Scooter's case, she had the wrong kind of nutrition, and so her bones did not grow correctly. 
She was in the wrong environment. So she now has hotel living with us. We make sure to give her the right kind of food and the right environment. But what happened to those bones stays happened. Now she does still have a nice little hinge right here on her plastron and that will close up when she is scared. But Scooter here is pretty fearless. She's not scared of a whole lot. Um, and she gets around really, really well. So I'm gonna put her back on the ground so you can watch her move for just a moment. I'm gonna set her this way so you can see that hand that is missing doesn't inhibit her movement at all. There you go, Scooter. She is taking her time, but she's definitely not having any trouble over the ground. She's trying to find the next spot she wants to get to. So Eastern box turtles don't like to be exposed. Oh, she thinks she may have found something interesting there. They like to eat worms and bugs that live in the ground. So she may well be noticing where a tasty snack might be living. But they don't like to be exposed out in the open where a hawk or an eagle might pick them up and try to eat them. So, since she's come to a standstill, I don't want her to be eaten either. So I'm going to pick her up and put her back in her enclosure. And we're going to say bye to Scooter for today. Did you know, in Georgia, it is illegal to own most animals native to Georgia. This law is to help protect our native species. You also should never release a pet into the wild. Releasing a pet can have many consequences, such as the pet might be unprepared for the wild and get hurt or it could be an invasive species which harms the environment around it. There are different ways that invasive species might harm an, an environment. They could eat all of the food and use up all of the homes of native species. They could also carry diseases into a new environment which harm the native species.